detail when we get into the spinal cord itself. And it's amazing that when you, see, when you saw the cadaver video, uh, this cord is literally smaller than your little finger and all this stuff fits in. It's a pretty fascinating structure. But when we look at this thing, and what we have to know on here, well, there's your dorsal root ganglion, there's your dorsal root, there's your ventral root, the spinal nerve. So we said the whole dorsal side is always what? Dorsal? Sensory. Sensory. And the ventral side is motor. That's always. There's no exception. That never changes. So the back part of your spine takes care of sensory impulses. The anterior part of your spine will take care of motor impulses. So again, dorsal root, dorsal root ganglion. What's a ganglion? It's where they meet. It's a bump. Why is it a bump? It's like this is where this thing is and we have another cell coming into it. So the cell body sits in there. Okay. Lower junction? Huh? Lower it's the junction, correct. It's really a synapse inside there. So the cell body's here. And it's kind of like when they designed the, the sensory <coughs> system, they made the wire too short. So they had to add a little piece of wire to get it inside the spinal cord. It was kind of a, I don't know, nature mess up. <laughs> Where the, the motor one is perfect, because the main line is in here, and it comes out with one continuous axon all the way out. And we talked about that. Where this one has, you know, here it has double axons, an axon coming in, so and then a small axon coming in here to feed on the into neuron. And we went over that. So the, the H looking or butterfly is normally a gray fibers, and that would be known as the horn area. And the white would be the outside area, which is normally white because it's myelinated, and that would be the funiculus area. So that's everything that's on that, that's on there, you no know for your test, okay? Those little, those are the spinal nerves, right? Please connect. Please? Yeah. Oh, that's a spinal nerve. Oh, the end of it. Yeah. These are, each one of these would be an individual dorsal root or ventral root. Uh, so the point I want you to realize we simplify it as a black and a white wire. Well, it's more like if you cut a wire that you're using on a lamp, there's multi-threads in there. That's pretty much how your, your spinal nerves are set up. There's multiple tracks going through there, each one doing a specific function. Vibration, temperature, light pain, deep pain, deep pressure. You know, that's all individual sensations coming through. So it's different, okay? So there's a lot of variation in Alrighty, so that takes care of this model here. I guess you'll have questions now. This guy here will take him apart. So you can see some detail about him. But when you look at this thing, this is a true neuron. Flesh, flesh, flesh. And you're an axial nerve. So this would be a nice motor neuron. And there's my cell body. And then his. So the light brown color in the middle would be a true axon. But this whole thing is the cell body, and the pink <coughs> circle would be the nucleus, and these would be the dendrites that are going to take on the information. The yellow coating around it would be what's coating the nerve, the myelin sheet, the myelin sheet, and these little pink cells, those are your swan cells that are developing. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know on this model. There's a picture in your good picture in your textbook of it that goes through this in detail. So that's pretty much what you. You're probably the only group that's going to get asked, and so this would probably be at the end of the test. This, this, and this would be near the end of the. Well, that shouldn't be near the end. I don't know why they're covering that in detail with their students.
Now what I need is that other big model down there. Just give me a second to get it. Um, this one? Yes. It weighs a ton, so if I'm ready to start lifting it. There's no way to count here. Okay. There we go. All right. Now this is showing you kind of that cadaver dissection, but from the anterior view versus the posterior view, like she did. This one here, they gutted you out, and you're looking at empty, an empty cavity, and then they remove the vertebrae away from the front versus removing it from the back. All right. So when we look at this guy. Things we need to see. Well, this whole white thing coming down and up, sliding the throat down, is your all your spinal cord. And at the end, it ends at a point, like a cone shape. Hence called the conus medullaris. Then running off the conus medullaris is this little thin white line going all the way out the coccyx. That's the phylum terminale or the terminal filament. And that's pretty much made all of PM matter. Its job is to anchor this spinal cord where it belongs. That's why it's there. It's an anchor to hold it in place. So when you bend over, your spinal cord doesn't roll up to the top of your head. It wouldn't feel too good to hold up and down in the shape. On each side of it, it looks like the tail of a horse, known as corda equina, because the spinal cord will end roughly at the level L1 slash L2, depending on what book you read, and if the person's standing up versus lying down, it changes the length of it. So in other words, the first thing to grow in you, because in a fetus, this would go all the way to the coccyx. And, and when it's first born, it would be around L4-5. And then as you grow, the bony structure grows. But the spinal cord's length is almost all there where it has to be. That's why if you look at a child's head compared to the rest of their body, it's bigger than the rest of their body. Because the brain and the nervous system has to develop fast to get everything going. So that's the main structures there. Then these white nerves in between the ribs, and they're known as intercostal nerves. These little chain looking pink colored ganglia are your sympathetic ganglia. They lie right on top of the rib. Then we come up here. Well, now you're going to get introduced to your brachial plexus. The brachial plexus here is made up of nerve roots of C5 to T1. So it goes 5, 6, 7, 8, T1. Okay, and you can see that on here. So each one can be individually counted. 5, 6, 7, 8, T1. Okay, so if a sticky would be placed here, you would say C7 nerve root, because that's what it is, a nerve root. Then it will continue on. And I'm going to draw it on the board for you after for your cats to make it a little more make sense to you. It will continue on to chords. We have the two cords in the front, which would be the anterior cord, which is going to be the, the lateral and the medial cord, and this is the posterior. These two in the front are going to give you all the nerves that are going to feed down to create all the muscles, that are, all the nerves that are going to control the anterior portion of the arm. This will give the nerves to control the posterior part of the arm. So in other words, these would create what we call the M, that you look for the M in the cat. You raise them up, it looks like an M. And on top of that muscular cutaneous, median nerve, ulnar nerve. You will feed down the, the, um, the median and the ulnar will feed all the way to your hand. On the back, from the posterior cord, you would get the radial and the axillary. So that's how it breaks itself up. All right? So it's pretty simple as that. So that's all you need to know off this part. And this is all in your books and stuff. So you got to look at and Really, most people do well on all this stuff on the ground. But they blow is the muscles in the gap. And so for people blow questions, they blow them for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. So. Okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to draw the M on the board. If you want to film that, and then you know, probably can go back to your seats and see this. And just to give you an idea of what you're looking at when you get inside the cap. Now, the lower extremity, you've seen most of the nerves already. Remember we had a, cut, a big muscle on the outside, posterior thigh. What muscle was that we, that's cut and we pulled back? On the outside, posterior. Outside, last, that's medial. Posterior, lateral thigh. It's part of your hamstring. Which one is it? Uh, I'll write this for Boris. Yeah. No, bicep. 
biceps femoris. So we pull the right, and we see the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve gives two branches. One is going to go over the top of the leg, which is going to be the common fibula, and one digs right into the gastroxinemia, it's called the tibia. That's what they got. So then we deflected the sartorius up, and when you pulled it up, it's like a little triangle up here. There's a thick white fiber coming through. That's the femoral nerve. When you pulled back the bacillus, it's like a little white thread coming off of it, feeding into the adductor group. That's the operating nerve. So that's where the nerves are in the legs of the cat. So they're already out. You're already seeing them without realizing them. Okay, this is your approval, I think. All right, so now we look for the branch coming up underneath here to put this all together. And then we're going to have these nerves coming out from here. So there's the end. So this would be my lateral cord. And this would be my medial cord. And you can see this far back in the cap. So that means this would be the median nerve. Remember, it's median, not medial. You put medial, it's wrong. Medial is a direction, it's not a nerve, okay? This one here is going to be going down on the medial side to my pinky, so this would be the ulna. The one up here, which would take care of the biceps region, is the musculocutaneus. Those are the three anterior division nerves that are going to feed your arm, okay? So it's pretty easy to remember, the median does your thumbs, Alma does my pinky, biceps is done by muscular cutaneous. All right, so let's draw the posterior divisions. So we're going to have a posterior division coming in, which would be this one here. So this would be the posterior cord. All right, so this guy is going to continue on deep and dig down deep, and this would be my radial. And this one's going to dig up towards my shoulder, and this would be the axilla. Okay? So the radial takes care of the whole posterior arm from triceps down, down to your knuckles. And the axilla is going to come up to your deltoids and teres major. And that's what it's feeding. So just keep it in your head, median. If the person loses their strength or pulls their thumb with strength with the tricopal tunnel, so the median. Alma, hold the back, radial, muscular cutaneous, axillary. And if you break it down like this, it becomes so much easier to keep it straight in your head. Could you just do that one more time? Sorry. Could you shut your camera off? <laughs> Again, put our arm out. So this would be the medium, the pinky ulna. Hold back from knuckles back up to my shoulder, all through the triceps area, radial, musculocutaneous, my biceps, axillary, my deltoids. And if you keep that simple thing in your head, it's easy to remember where they should be. The same names are given to them in the plastic models that they are in the cap. All right? So, with that, now you should be experts. The brains, the brains that will be used on your test are any one of the three colored ones that have the book sticking out through them. The book is a guide, numbered, you look at the things I want you to look at, and then you look at the color part in the brain, and it'll tell you what you're looking at, okay? So we'll let you get started, and then we'll come around and not help. All right? You're doing now, the nerves. Yeah, the nerves. All right, so let me get two probes. So we get two probes. This is a two probe job. So. First of all, we, we want to find the thing that we call the M, the M. which comes off all the anterior mm -hmm. parts of, the, of this division. Okay. So this would be medial cord, this is lateral cord. They come together and they form muscular cutaneous, median nerve, ulna nerve. Gotcha. Then we go into the posterior of this cat. The, from the posterior cord, we have radial nerve, which mm -hmm. is going to take care of all the back of the arm. Okay. And coming way up in here, which we can't find it now. We have the axillary, axillary nerve okay. coming into the shoulder. Okay. So axillary and radial is the posterior, the anterior ones are the, with your M, okay. which make up muscular cutaneous, median, ulna. Now we come down into the, into the lower leg. So when we take this uh, gracilis and reflect it back, 
here's your optimator nerve right here. Okay. When we reflect back uh, sartorius, here's femoral nerve okay. right here. When we reflect back biceps uh, femoris, here's the sciatic, mm -hmm. common fibula, tibial. And that's okay. all your nerves in the cat. So it's know. sciatic here. Up here, and, and it when it the splits, it, 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 the sciatic creates the tibial and the common fibula. Okay. It branches off the sciatic. Okay. Okay? All right, so sciatic, common, um, uh, common fibula, fibula, and tibial. tibial. Okay, perfect. And that's okay. it. You got it. So you got nerves. That's a cup.